Her company has paid Nigerians over 1.1 trillion naira since it started. That's over a billion dollars. In this video, we'll talk about her journey and how she did it. One of my favorite standout moments would be in 2017, when we randomly woke up one morning and someone had released a blog post by herself on how she saved for her first car with Piggy Vest. Ms. Odunwayo Eweni. Co-founder and CEO of Piggy Vest. It is the first online saving and investment app in West Africa. Wow. Users wise, how many? We crossed 4.5 million, I think, earlier in the month. So over 4.5 on Piggy Vest alone. Did you always want to be an entrepreneur? No. It was all kinds of what the hell do you think you're doing? My name is Adon Ayoweni. I'm co founder and CEO at Piggy Vest and I'm co founder and general partner at Fresh Check Africa. And so I suppose Piggy Vest is a fintech company that's targeted at well it was initially targeted at young nigerians now it's just targeted at nigerians and the idea is to democratize access to financial services so we started in 2016 with savings and investments and now we've gone to payments we've gone to businesses the idea is just we want payments finances money to be understandable easy and finally just democratize access to whatever it is you want to do. And with Fast Check, I suppose what that is, is a pre-seed seed fund that invests in high growth tech startups that have at least one female um, founder or co-founder. And the idea behind that is very simple. We need more women at the table. Um, the only way to get more women at the table is to fund more women. And because myself and my co-founders are women, we are doing our own bit to make sure that there is some diversity and some inclusion in the startups that we actually give money to. What was the motivation behind First Check? All right, so Elo and I are friends. We've been friends for a bit. And I'm a female founder. I have been a female founder for about 10 years. Eloho has been an investor for, I suppose, maybe longer than that. So I know I'm very familiar with the journey that women go through in tech. I have gone through it myself. I know how difficult it is to get people to buy into your idea. I know how difficult it is to raise that first capital. All of that is the inspiration behind Fresh Check, right? So what if we could find people who would give specifically, you know, companies with female representation, the earliest capital that they need to begin? What does that change? So that was the question we tried to answer in 2021. Uh, at the end of 2021 and last year, we found the answer is a lot. It changes a lot. And so we've continued now to continue to scale up that endeavor, right? Continue to invest at scale across Africa in tech startups that have women like on the co-founding team. So it's not just we're investing in only women, it's just have at least one woman and you're good to go. You said uh, Big Invest started in 2016 and according to the tales, it's like Formerly Piggy Bank, it was from a tweet that the co-founder sent to the WhatsApp group. What was the moment that made you and everyone go, yes, this is the thing we need to build? No moment. Our history is listed with this is the thing we need to build. Okay. And that's just the idea behind it, right? We were people who tried a lot of things. So before Piggy Vest in 2016, we started Push CV in 2014 of, I think, March. And, you know, in between that, we started a bunch of things. Our entire thing was how do we build to serve this big market that we were sure that the market was there. It was just a matter of finding what product does the market really need. So when Josh saw that tweet and brought it to the group chat, he said there should be a way to digitize, you know, the experience that people have when they save in Ecolo. And we went back and forth. Some of the tweets are still up where mm. we're going back and forth on how personal or impersonal it would be. And the consensus was we should try. So we're pretty much a team that tries. Um, so it's not like, oh, we have this come to Jesus moment and then we're like, oh, we must build this. No, it's say we should try this out and see where it goes. The goal is still the same. And it has definitely evolved. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can just think of it like a colo that has many different ways that you can use it. Um, but the experience is still the same. You put money somewhere, you continue to put money there. Um, unlike a colo, we pay you interest. But like a colo, you only get it out when you're ready to break it. Hmm. And I'm a, I'm a proud customer <laughs> of Piggy Vest. Um, during your, your time running Piggy Vest, what would you say has been like the, maybe some of the very best moments, like when this happened, I was like, wow, I'm so happy I did this thing. Honestly, I, I, I get that every few, like, so it, it's very different because I can't really say I'm pinpointing this moment. Mm. All right. The moments that people expect would be the ones mostly it's just like, hey, this has finally happened. We, we move. Mm. So, but Piggy Vest, like the gratification you get from building it is really centered around people mm. and the impact. And I know it sounds cliche, but that's really it, right? It's a 
company that was built by young Nigerians for young Nigerians. And now we've expanded to just be helping anybody. And so the stories that come from that are so varied and so different and so hard hitting that every single time someone tells me something that Piggy has helped them do, that's the moment that I get, we should continue doing this. I mean, it's had a bunch of big moments in its history, right? You know, hitting our first like million users, that was a big deal. Hitting our like, you know, target AUM, big deal. Raising a seed round, big deal. Getting to 100 like team members, big deal. Exceeding that, right? And there's always something happening, awards here, lists there. Uh, I think 2020 Fast Company put us on a list and that was a big deal as well. But all of that is one thing. Mm. Then the lives that it's actually changing is a completely different thing. One of my favorite standout moments would be in 2017, when we randomly woke up one morning and someone had released a blog post by herself on how she saved for her first car with Piggy Vest. Like, I don't think that anything that you've submitted an application for, or giving them the data for, like compares to someone deciding of their own volition to talk about the product that you're building every day. Did you always want to be an entrepreneur? No, I did not always want to be an entrepreneur. And my parents definitely did not want me to be an entrepreneur. Either. And it's not really about your abilities. It was just about like, is there a future there? Mm. And like, yeah, so, you know, you're so smart. You should probably do something else entirely. Why are you doing this thing that's not sure? Mm -hmm. So in my family, my, both my parents were university professors, are university professors. And for us, it's really been super academic, right? It's My parents are very academic. I was very academic as well. So my entire future, if you'd asked me when I was in 500 level was, I'm going to go get my master's and then I'm going to become a research professor. That was it, right? So when I, you know, came to Lagos to do some work before NYC and met up with Tomto and Josh and then came back home and told my parents, I think I'm going to take a pause and build this for a while. It was all kinds of, what the hell do you think you're doing? And so my, my parents don't doubt your ability. When mm. it became clear, you know, I'm not listening to anybody. This is what I'm going to do. I was like, cool. Like a couple of years in and we continued to go, even when I still needed my mom to like bring foodstuffs for me because things were tough. It was just like, you keep pushing, you keep moving. We think there'll be light. And then there was. There are over 100 people that work for Piggy Vest. How many are you guys now? Uh, okay, we just came back from a company retreat. So I think we're about 150. Wow. And users-wise, users, users -wise, how many? We are we crossed 4.5 million, I think, earlier in the month. So over 4.5 on Piggy Vest alone. Pocket has 2.6 million people. So... That's for Pocket from Abeg. A lot of people, when there was the Big Brother and the whole thing, people were like speculating, like, is it owned by Piggy Vest? Is it part of Piggy Vest? How, how was that relationship like? It was acquired by Piggy Vest. It was acquired yes. By so yeah. Okay. How would you characterize your leadership style? I feel like you should be asking the people that work with me. Okay. Well, I'll take a guess at, I like working with self-starters, right? Mm. Um, I prefer to provide direction rather than step-by-step -step guidance, step-by-step um, step, step step, like rules. The end goal is this. Um, let's see how you execute it. I'm really very, I, I hardly set deadlines. Um, I'm very happy to give a task and ask, you know, I want the involvement of the person I'm talking to in saying, oh, I think we should be able to finish this by this my entire challenge is when you set that deadline yourself and then don't meet it, mm. right? So it's a kind of a balance between conversation and then being firm. So I really like the conversation part of it where we're talking about this is how we should do it. And there's a proper exchange of ideas. Like I work closely with the legal team, treasury team, take recommendations, ask questions. And then I agree with you if your recommendations are right. Oh, I push back. And I think... What one thing that most of our teammates will tell you is they're allowed to push back as well. There is no one source of truth in the company, right? We have a direction that we are all heading in. We have buy-in from everyone who works in the team and then we figure out the best way to get there. So there is, you know, enforcing certain rules along the way. There's being firm, there's enforcing deadlines sometimes, but largely it's everybody working, creating their own working styles and then, you know, fitting that into the large overarching vision. So I'd say it's, it's mostly kind of laid back and I will only like, you know, sit upright when it's like, okay, we're close to this deadline. I haven't seen any updates from you. I cannot see like the progress that we've made where all of them at the same time. Hmm. So 
to direction instead of more like uh, yeah i don't really the micromanaging micro thing is not really my thing i just because i also have a lot on my plate so hiring people who are able to kind of manage themselves is one thing that we try to optimize for and how do you find these guys like how do you find self-starters or look for self-starters and talent you hire i mean it was in the early days where i had to personally find them now they have to find self-starters for themselves oh. right so uh, for instance um the lead, the person who had our customer success we had to like go through like several layers of conversation with her like she's customer success manager now and she rose to that role i think in you know, four years she's fantastic at her job right but it was level of conversation to figure out is she the right person to come in as one of the first three customer success people that we ever hired right and then now she's built a whole department and you know essentially clones of herself if we're being honest and then they go on to like that like that like that and that's why it's important to get like people who can do it by themselves so that you don't have to step in to build the layer under them and then that because it never ends mm. there's this question i want to ask is about entrepreneurship and policy do you think every entrepreneur should have a role to play in policy perhaps not a role but okay. you should definitely be like in some way participant you know mm. policy definitely affects you it affects us more than we think right and so even if you're not the one sat at the table your voice should somehow be heard at the table and that's the role i suppose of organizations and lobbying groups and think tanks right we're taking what a group of entrepreneurs think and then taking it to the leaders so even if you're not the one carrying it to the leaders you should attempt to be a part of where like people are sharing their opinions and sharing their voices because if you're not you then can't complain that like you know the policies don't reflect what you want so as much as possible um i understand people wanting to be like oh you know i don't want to be involved in politics i don't want to be partisan and all of those things valid but you have to find some way to work with the government that governs the country within which you're doing business if not you don't really get things going your way Yeah, what do you think of AI though? Me? Not much, honestly. I use ChatGPT to compose emails. That's the extent <laughs> of my participation at the moment. Okay. But I think that from my perspective, it plays a big role when you think about wealth management and robo advisory if like it's used right. So AI and machine learning is really around, you know, understanding whoever's inputting that data and then giving you like similar suggestions at its core. So if you think about Fisaya, okay, so you've used and behaved like this on SafeLock for two years. AI then is able to predict or tell you, oh, this is probably what you want to do next. So if, you, if you're always SafeLocking and only 500,000 naira every month, for instance, right? Your robot advisor is well-placed to then tell you, oh, you know, based on your SafeLocking habits and your spending habits, perhaps on pocket, you should probably be able to save comfortably x amount over the next x months that's kind of how i'm roughly thinking about its application for us all right so we're in the quick fire section of the interview so i'll ask you a this or that question and you would answer and you might say you can choose to say why iphone or android i thought going out or staying indoors depends on what day ah, okay <laughs> On your phone or your computer, do you prefer dark theme or light theme? Light mood, always. Both phone and computer? All of them, yeah. Okay. Saving or investing? Investing. Ah. Fried chicken or grilled chicken? Grilled chicken. Do you prefer reading hard copy books or PDFs? Hard copy books. I like paper. What's your favorite football team? Manchester City. Your favorite sports? Formula One. <laughs> Ronaldo or Messi? Messi. Ah, okay. What's your favorite book of all time? I don't have a favorite book of all time. Um, the book I was obsessed with for a bit was <laughs> Bad Blood, the story of the Theranos founder. But I don't oh. have a favorite book. I just kind of have a book of the moment, I guess. Would you say there's a book that like you read that helped you like in your in your journey? No, I collect words from people. I don't mm. really like I don't I can't say there's a book. But when people say things, Um, I just like take a note of one sentence or one line and those are the things that like form the bedrock for my own philosophies. Do you have a favorite movie of all time? A favorite movie? <laughs> this, I don't think this is, no, I, I can't say it on the um, thing, but I do have one. It's just really, it's re what people would consider objectively bad, so. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Okay. <laughs> all right. We're down to the last three questions and we're doing this thing with the leaderboard where we're asking two questions one about money and one about life and we're giving a macbook to one subscriber in a separate video okay is this something that you're okay with sure 
So in terms of money, what is the one thing you'd say to anyone who wants to improve their current financial situation and hopefully make a bit more money for themselves? The first thing to understand, and I know that the first knee-jerk reaction to this will be, oh, it's a privilege. But if you think about it very deeply, money is usually the byproduct of the journey. Mm. Right. I'm not saying don't optimize for more money, don't optimize to take money. But in my experience and like where you're going, right, setting the right goals for yourself, setting the right objectives for yourself and figuring out a path to that place on the journey there, you typically find the monetary reward. So um, and for a career person, for instance, and a good example would be getting out of university, being offered an internship at a prestigious place versus a job that immediately pays. You have a decision to make, right? Mm. And nobody can decide it for you. But when you look at your path to where you want to be, when you pick that one thing and you like stick to it, the money is usually like along the way, right? Most people think, oh, you know, it's okay to like, uh, let me collect the money now and just keep optimizing for more money. But the first thing to understand is actually very hard to optimize for more money, right? I think that from, you know, like what I've seen work for like the people I look up to is set a path, set a goal, start working towards it. And then you just, you discover that success along the way. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, it's a, it's very, very subjective advice. And then in terms of life, what is the one thing anyone can do in their life that can elevate them? Or one thing you did in your life that elevated you? And what did you learn from This it? is great. I plagiarized my dad for this answer. My dad said to me, and maybe he plagiarized someone, I don't know. But he said to me one time when we sat outside, said, aim very hard, work very hard, care very deeply. And if you carry those two things with you, they actually kind of cover everything, right? So you improve your like goals, your abilities, and even you as a person, when you carry those three things around in very high, the only thing that stops you is you work very hard. If you set a goal, like why are you not giving everything that it takes to get there? And then care very deeply, right? What is the impact and the motivation and the human, like the human like end of the thing that you're working towards? Like if you carry people with you when you're like going on this journey, it's almost like if you want to go like far, go together, right? And so, yeah. And then the final question, is there any other advice that you would give to someone watching this episode currently? Uh, the only advice I can give you is to just start. Um, I said at the beginning of this that myself and my co-founders are a team that just try. We literally just try. Uh, our history and our journey is littered with failed projects and failed startups that we simply couldn't make a go of. And then we, we got lucky, right place, right time. In 2016, we started Piggy Vest. In the same way, just start. Um, and you will fall. This, this is not a guarantee that you won't fail. You will. The only right answer is to just not quit. Thank you so much for your time. You're this welcome. was very, very insightful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very yeah. much. Check out our interview with Tosin from Money Africa, who breaks down how you can build wealth and how you can maintain it. I'll see you in that video.